All life as we know it requires cells. Our body contains up to 100 trillion cells. Each cell in our body is enclosed by a fluid membrane. Inside this membrane we find a very crowded environment containing billions of DNA, RNA and protein molecules as well as a plethora of smaller nutrient molecules like those we take up through our diet. The life of a cell depends on a large number of cellular pathways that utilize these nutrient molecules and assemble them into the large DNA, RNA and protein molecules from which biology emerges. Hi, my name is Niels Walter. I'm the Francis S. Collins Collegiate Professor of Chemistry, Biophysics and Biological Chemistry at the University of Michigan. And I wrote a Problems and Paradigms article for the journal Bioassays that describes how these biological pathways of the cell achieve their specificity to, at least most of the time, do exactly what the cell needs at a given moment. In particular, I argue in this essay that molecular diversity matters more than scientists perhaps realize or have been able to address in experiments. Ultimately, our goal as scientists studying biology is to understand how life emerges from the vast complexity of the cell, as represented here by a survey of just the most prevalent, what we call metabolic pathways, responsible for the conversion of nutrients into the biomolecules of the cell. So the question all bioscientists are ultimately interested in is how do these specific pathways emerge from the crowded molecular environment of the cell. So-called Le Charlier mass action considerations dictate that the sheer number of weak interactions expected from the complex mixture of cellular components significantly shapes the specificity of biological pathways. In particular, one pathway that is functional become those interactions thermodynamically and kinetically sufficiently stable to survive the incessant onslaught of the many off pathway or non-functional interactions. Let me draw this thought out. If we have an enzyme in the cell that binds a specific substrate, and this substrate has a certain shape that conforms to the shape of the enzyme so that the enzyme can recognize, bind, and convert it into a product, then that works like so. However, in the crowded molecular environment of the cell, Oftentimes, there are other molecules, actually a majority of molecules, that are different from the substrate and may be still quite similar, but distinct enough to not be converted into the product that this cell needs. As a consequence, if these molecules are very high in concentration or there are just a lot of different ones, a diverse set of them present in the cell compared to the substrate, these might outcompete with the substrate in a way that ultimately leads to a non-productive interaction whereby the enzyme instead binds, even if it's only temporarily, these other molecules that fight to get access to the active side of the enzyme. As a consequence then, many, many interactions that are non-functional, non-specific, weak enough, but so abundant that in the end they win out part of the time against the substrate so that the enzyme spends a considerable of amount of time not binding the substrate and turning it over but doing something else instead binding a non-productive weak interacting alternative substrate that is not turned over. And so this competition shapes the specificity of this primary interaction between the enzyme and the substrate within the cell in ways that we haven't fully understood yet from experiments with purified in vitro components. Many cellular examples for such competition have now been discovered. For example, the competition between regulated messenger RNA molecules for their regulatory RNAs that bind them and regulate them. An example is a messenger RNA that is regulated by a regulatory RNA, perhaps a microRNA, that binds it and leads to, eventually, its degradation. So the RNA gets destroyed, the messenger RNA, and ultimately does not lead to further products in the cell. However, if there's a competing second RNA present in the cell, that cell might well siphon away that regulatory RNA, and as a consequence, the target RNA survives and again gets expressed leading to higher expression of this target RNA simply because of the competition of this 
secondary RNA that siphons away the regulatory RNA that otherwise would have degraded the target. But the cell can also modulate this competition by either compartmentalization of RNAs in membrane-less organelles, often referred to as RNA granules, where the local concentration is different from that of the bulk of the cell and oftentimes very high, or inactivity of certain components leads to changes in the pathway. In other cases, kinetic partitioning can be used to organize and direct these pathways, where an irreversible step involving hydrolysis of ATP makes earlier interaction partners inaccessible and separates the forward and backward pathway, so directing the pathway to move forward. Consequently, to better understand the molecular biology of the cell, a further paradigm shift is needed toward experimental and computational approaches that probe this intracellular diversity and complexity more directly. That is, we need to fully embrace the complexity of the cell and match its sophistication with that of our analysis tools in hopes that we can finally understand cellular life.